Career with Minnesota, Kyle Rudolph has 29 receiving touchdowns. That's the most by a tight end in Vikings franchise history. This season, he posted career highs with 83 receptions, going for 840 yards. A big chunk of those coming from Week 17 versus the Bears, where he went for 117 yards and hit pay dirt. And with that, we bring in Kyle Rudolph of the Vikings. Thanks for joining us here for on, on Sports Center. I know he's doing the car wash, but I, I want you to take me back to August 31st. It's a preseason practice, and you watch your quarterback, Teddy Bridgewater, go down and be carted off the field. What were you thinking? You know, that was a tough day. Uh, our last preseason practice, like you mentioned, we weren't even playing in the preseason game that Thursday. Our preseason work was pretty much all and done. Uh, we were just going out to get some work in, and the second play of practice, Teddy goes down uh, untouched, taking a drop that he's done millions of times in his life. And uh, it, was, it was heartbreaking, you know, when you see uh, the pain in his eyes, the frustration. Um, it was really tough to see. And it wasn't until after when I was able to go spend some time with him in the hospital, uh, see his spirits and the attitude that he had to attack what he was about to endure. And I think he really made it to then where I was able to go back to work that next day because nobody felt sorry for us. That Nobody in the NFL was like, oh, well, your quarterback's out. We feel bad for you. Uh, so we had to go back and get to work and get ready for the Tennessee Titans. And it was Teddy's attitude towards his injury and the rehab he was going to have to go through that allowed me to do that. You, you got right back to work, right? Sam Bradford steps in, and then you set career highs. How did that happen? Uh, it's a testament to Sam and the work that he put in. You know, he starts his first game 13 days after he walks through our doors and meets everyone for the first time. And... Uh, I was explaining earlier on Mike and Mike, it would be like taking Spanish for an entire semester in high school, and then all of a sudden, the week of the final, they tell you you need to go take the French final and learn a completely new language, uh, try to gel and mesh with a bunch of receivers and tight ends that you've never thrown the ball to, you have no chemistry with. Uh, but he did. He put the extra time not only on the field with us as receivers, but off the field with our coaching staff making sure that he learned the system as well as he could in 13 days. When did you know it was going to work? That first game. Uh, you know, when, when we went, played Green Bay on Sunday night football, and you see him out there and the poise that he showed, the, the confidence that he had, not only in the huddle, because he's standing in the huddle with 10 guys that, like I said, he met 13 days prior. Uh, you knew there was something about this guy, and, you know, you look at the decorated college career that he had, Heisman Trophy winner, first overall pick. You know the talent's there. And, you know, what he showed in that short span of time was that he's the real deal. You know I have to go there, right? I have to go there. You're going to be asked this question quite a bit over the next few months. There's a bit of a quarterback conundrum mm -hmm. now. So, Teddy Bridgewater, Sam Bradford, who's better looking? <laughs> oh, I, I, can't, I, I, can't, I can't win answering that question. Um, You'd prefer to answer the other one? Which one do you want to go with? <laughs> no, they, uh, they're both phenomenal not only football players but leaders in our locker room and good guys to be around so uh, it's a good problem to have when you have more than one I, I, I make light of it but can we just can, can we just look at all the things that happen to your team I know you're well aware the thing is it takes up an entire screen all the <laughs> things that happen to you Teddy Bridgewater gets hurt Adrian Peterson gets hurt your offensive coordinator North Turner resigns your kicker Blair Walsh gets cut and then your coach doesn't have an eye he has an eye, but he has to miss a yes. game because of surgery. What do you guys say to each other when Lady Luck has just abandoned you? You know, you go through a season, and I've been asked, you know, how do you describe what happened to you this season? And it's, I say it every time, it's something unlike I've ever seen in any sports. Um, the amount of adversity that we had to go through throughout the course of the season, uh, you go back and you reflect afterwards, and we still won eight games, and... Although eight games is not our goal and eight games is not where we want to be at the end of the season, there were opportunities for us to still win 10, 11 games, be back in the playoffs where we were the year before. Uh, you know, we just didn't execute in some critical situations, uh, late in fourth quarter, overtime losses. So you, that's a testament to our team, to the guys in our locker room. Uh, the, not only the talent that's there, but the high character guys that we have, that no matter what happens to us, the amount of adversity that we go through uh, each and every Sunday, we feel like we can go out no matter who we play, where we play, 
that we think we can win the game. All right, Kyle. While the folks in Minnesota are well aware of who you are and, and, and also in South Bend as well, Notre Dame alum, we're going to get to know you a little bit here. All right? So I'm going to do rapid fire. All right. I'm going to just fire questions at you. First thing that comes to your mind, that's what you go with. And we'll start with something very easy. You ready? Okay. Yeah. Favorite reindeer? Rudolph. That's easy. Uh, yeah, I thought so. Last big purchase you made? Oh, uh, last big purchase I made? Probably all my wife's Christmas presents. Ooh, and what did they include? Oh, lots of shoes. Nice. Uh, some jewelry. Uh, and then now with the twin girls, uh, you know, I always like to get her something that is kind of in coordinates with them, you know, stuff with their name on it, things like that. All right, last big purchase you regret. Oh, uh, last big purchase I regret. Probably my boat. So I bought a boat this past summer. And I say I regret it because I waited too long. I didn't get to enjoy it all summer. I waited till the end of summer. And then obviously in Minnesota, we go to training camp in July. You don't get to enjoy the best month of summer. So I regret not buying it sooner. All right. Uh, you just mentioned that you had twins. Biggest challenge with having twin girls. Oh, I don't think I've come to that challenge yet. I think that challenge will be 14, 16 years down the road um, because so far to this point, they've been awesome. They're great babies. Yeah, when the boys start knocking on the door. That's I'm not worried famous. about the boys. Oh, no? I'll, I'll take care of the boys. Ooh, yeah. is that right? Fighting Absolutely. words. I like it. Uh, I just mentioned you went to Notre Dame. So you're in a battle. Who do you want by your side? A fighting Irish or a Viking? Oh, that is a great question. <laughs> I'm going to go Viking just simply okay. because, like, it's hard for me to picture something besides, like, a little tiny leprechaun. <laughs> so, although, you know, fighting Irish, like, tough, like, that would be great. Like, Vikings are just tough and rugged and... You know, they, they leave no prisoners, so I, I, want, boats. I want the Viking on my you side. You want the Viking absolutely. by you. Wouldn't it be best if you could have a Viking that was a fighting Irish? Or a Viking with the luck of the Irish. Uh, that's a good one as well. Uh, all right. First thing you think of when you hear goat. Goat, greatest of all time. Okay. Right. Who is it? It's Michael Jordan, and I, I am a former basketball player, love the game of basketball player, and he is kind of the original. Uh, now it gets thrown around quite a bit. Uh, but most of the time, it's, it's always deserving. One-on-one, -on -one, who wins? You or Mike Golick, Jr.? No. Oh. <laughs> I got that one. You got yeah. Easily. He wouldn't contest that either. All right, let's look at your position. Tony Gonzalez or Gronk? Tony Gonzalez. Why? Uh, the span of work that he was able to put together over 17 years is unlike anyone ever at our position. Uh, to be not only on the list of tight ends, but if you put him on the list of receivers, uh, he's right up there behind only Jerry Rice, and uh, that's pretty impressive for a tight end. And lastly, what are you known for amongst your friends and family? Uh, amongst my friends and family, I think the thing that drives them most crazy is uh, most things seem to come easy to me, whether it's sports or, you know, golf, boating, surfing, things like that. I seem to pick up on things quickly, and the running joke in college was always like, what aren't you good at? Like, come on, like, let's find something that... So then they put me on ice skates this season during uh, you know, a promo we were doing with the Minnesota Wild, and... I saw it. We found something that I cannot do, and that is ice skate. That is annoying, people that are really, really good. I do want to make mention of your fashion choice. You look fantastic. Thank you. But are you really that weather battle-tested that you don't need to wear socks in the winter, Kyle? Always. These so, shoes are way too comfortable to I wear saying, You do know when you walk outside, you are going to have snow on your foot, and that is okay with you. Yeah, I mean, we're, it's like in the 30s here. This, if this I was nothing. in Minnesota, we'd have shorts and T-shirts on. <laughs> Just a summer weather for you. Absolutely. Kyle Rudolph of the Minnesota Vikings, thank you for taking some time with us, playing along. Enjoy the rest of your car wash.